We've been talking about um, ratios, and now we're going to be talking about relating rates and ratios to tables and graphs. Um, <laughs> at the bottom of your worksheet, you're going to see the definition for unit rates. And all this is is it compares the second quantity to just one unit. For example, I babysit for $8 per hour for one hour. So if somebody knows they're going to be gone for five hours, they know that they can multiply five times eight, and that's going to give them the total cost that it's going to cost them to pay me to babysit. So I'm looking at the one hour rate is $8, and from there I can find out anything I want to depending on how many hours. This is going to be the changing uh, number. This is going to be the steadfast number because I'm never going to change eight unless I go up maybe next year. We're going to use the table below to find the unit rate, the cost per cake, and then we're going to fill in the missing rate in the table. This one's fairly easy. I know for two cakes, I'm going to look for something in my table where I've got not only the number of cakes, and, but also the number that it, what it cost. Here, I've got four cakes are equal to $12. So I can just, I can decide how much would it be for one cake? Well, if I divide, what did I do to four? If when I divide four into 12, it gives me three. So I know that there, each cake is worth $3. So I can come back in here and take the number three. I know that I can take 12 and divide it by four and that will equal to three day three dollars so it's three dollars per cake so if i come over here and i know it's three dollars per cake i can then multiply three times the number of cakes and i know three cake two cakes are going to cost me six dollars and i can divide three into 18 and i know that three goes into 18 six times so i know this order had to have been six cakes Now we're going to use a graph. It says use the table below to create the price graph and then fill in the missing data in the table. Well, again, I don't know what one pound of chicken cost, but I do know that I have three pounds of chicken cost me, what, $9. So let's take that three pounds and divide it out into $9, and I know that three goes into nine three times evenly. So what is my cost per pound for chicken? It's $3, and this is where I got my $3. It's $3 per pound of chicken, okay? So I can easily fill out this table by saying three times one pound is gonna be $3. And I know that three, three goes into 15 five times, so this had to be five pounds of chicken in order to spend $15. Here, I've already got my grid out. I wish I had some of that grid that it could show you the crosshairs here in the middle, but I don't, so we're just gonna do it as best we can. One pound of chicken is gonna cost me $3, so I'm gonna go to one pound and $3, and put that here. I know that three pounds is gonna cost me $9, so I'm gonna go to three pounds, and I'm gonna go up here to nine. And I know that five pounds is gonna cost me $15, which is gonna be about right here. And if I graph it as straight a lot as I can, which I would use a ruler, and I'm going to put the ray or the arrow up there because it can keep on going, I can look at it and say $6 is going to cost me somewhere about $16 and a few odd cents. So I can look at this and I can compare the prices. This one, it says use the table below to find the unit rate miles per hour for each car and then fill in the missing data and create a speed graph with three different lines, one for each car. Here I know that I've got three miles an hour and the black car in three, uh, for three hours, if it travels for three hours, it will go 180 miles. So I'm only interested in the black car right now. So I'm going to look at three hours. I'm going to divide it into 180. And I know three goes into 18 six times. And that's going to be 18. Nothing left over. Carry down my zero and bring it up here. So the black car is going at a unit's rate of 60 miles an hour. So I'm going to come down here, and I know if it's 60 miles an hour and he's gone for six hours, I'm going to say 60 times 6 
is going to be if black car can go 360 miles. In nine hours, because it's going 60 miles in one hour, I'm going to multiply that times nine, and I know this will go five, it will go 540 miles in nine hours. Let's look at the red car. The only two things I have is in six hours it can go 240 miles. So I'm going to come over here and I know that if I find out how much it is going to be for one hour, all I have to do is divide six into 240. And I know six goes into 24 four times, and four times six is 24. Nothing left over, bring down my zero and I have to bring it in there. So the red car is going 40 miles per hour. So for one for so for every mile, for every hour, it's going 40 miles. So I know that three times 40 is going to give me 120 miles. And nine times 40 is going to give me 360 miles. All right? So when I look at the blue car, I'm going to look over here and say, okay, I know in nine hours it has gone 450 minutes. So I'm going to come up here and say nine hours goes into 400 and 50 miles, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say minutes. Nine goes into 45 exactly five times, that's 45. That's zero, bring my zero down, I know that's got to be a zero, so this is going 50 miles an hour. So the blue car is going 50 miles an hour. So 50 times three is gonna be 100, it can go 150 miles in three hours. 50 times six is going to be 300 miles in six hours, and I know in nine miles, it will go 450 miles. So let's come over here and plot. I'm gonna use blue to plot my, my blue car. I know at three hours, it will take him about 150, so it's gonna be about right here in the middle of these two. Six hours is gonna be 300. And I know in nine, my, nine hours, it's gonna be 450, which is gonna be about right here. And if I had a ruler, I could start at zero because we know that the car hasn't gone anywhere and I've kind of gone over my lines here. Put an arrow because it can keep going as many hours as it wants. And we're gonna look over here at three hours. I know the red car is going 120, so it's gonna be about right here. In six hours, it'll be 300. So it's right below the blue line, and 9 is going to be 450, which is going to be about right here. So it's very close, but it's going to be a little bit below the blue. The black car is going, um, in 3 hours it can go 180, so at 3 we're going to look over here to 180, so it's going to be about right here. And let's see, the black car in six hours is 360, so it's going to be about right here. And in nine hours, it's going to be 540, so it's going to be about right here. If you notice, the black car is just a little above the blue car. And if I look at this, I know that my black car, my blue car, is going a little bit faster than my blue car. I know it's going, this is going 50 miles an hour. I know that my red car is actually going 40 miles an hour. And I know that my black car is actually going 60 miles an hour. So when I look at that, that is telling me the black car is going a little bit faster because the steeper the slope or the steeper the line is, the faster it's going. The next fastest one will be the blue car, which is going to be right down here at 40 miles an, at 50 miles an hour. And at 40 miles an hour, my red car is going a little bit slower, so it's going to be my bottom line. We're going to be using some of this tomorrow and some graphs and some tables, and we're going to be finding unit rates so we can solve some problems. See you then.